Amen. While we were in worship this morning, the Lord reminded me, amen, in 1 Kings 18, amen, the prophet Elijah has been sent in to do warfare for the nation of Israel because the nation is halted between two opinions because the current leadership is trying to take the nation in a direction, amen, that wasn't God's will for their life, amen. So God raised up the prophet Elijah. His name means the Lord is God. So when he showed up, he was a picture. He was a representation of God getting involved in the affairs of his people. I want to remind us today, God loves to get involved in the affairs of his people. Amen. Amen. And as a result, he began to war against the spirit of Baal. He began to come against that seducing spirit that was trying to overtake the heart of the people of God. Amen? Amen. And as he did warfare and as he ministered according to the directions and the instructions that the Lord gave him, amen, he brought not just victory to the nation, but there was a time of revival. There was a time, amen, of outpouring. There was a time of great grace. Amen? And as he a man came to an end of a warfare season, he began to hear in the spirit, amen, that there was a sound of heavy rain, amen, and as he began to share what he was hearing, it brought him into a season of prayer, say a season of prayer. So he bowed down, amen, and he had his knees to the ground, he had his face to the ground, and while he was praying, amen, while leaders in the kingdom were praying, amen, while leaders were positioned on our face, amen, and he just began to cry out to God. And as a result of that cry, amen, the Holy Spirit began to move in the earth. He began to move in circumstances, amen. But it's interesting because he sends his servant to see and to report back, amen, what's happening outside of his prayer circle. He was praying, but he needed to be connected with other people that could go see, amen? And he told his servant to go see, and his servant kept coming back and saying, I don't see anything, I don't see anything. He kept telling him, go back, amen? He knew what he was sensing in his spirit. He knew that he was pregnant. He knew that God was ready to do something great, amen? But there were a part of the people that were praying, but there needed to be some servants that could go see. And when the servant went back the seventh time, he said, I see a cloud in the sky, a size of a man's fist. Now think about this for a moment. How could he see a man's fist in the sky? That's not possible. But because he followed the instructions that came out of prayer, his eyes were open, and the beginning of something that was going to bring great restoration, great revival, great relief to the people of God was able to be discerned and communicated. I want to suggest that this is a season where we really need to be in prayer, but we need to be connected with other servants that can see. Because there's some things that God wants to release. There's some things that God wants to do. But these things happen after repentance, not before repentance. And wherever there is corporate repentance, there will be a fresh release of rain. There will be a fresh release of life. And there will be a fresh release of favor and dew that will encourage us for our next season. So, Father, I thank you for those that have been interceding following the leading of your Holy Spirit. We're all servants. You call us sons and daughters, but we're all servants. But I also thank you for those servants that have been listening to the instructions and they have gone out and they have reported what they've seen. You told us not to get weary in well-doing. Sometimes we go out and we don't see anything and we want to quit. But we heed the word of the Lord that tells us, go look again. Go look again. Go see again. And that seventh time, that time of rest, is when we will begin to apprehend what you're doing in the earth. And so I thank you for that blessing that you're releasing. Thank you for eyes to see and ears to hear. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
I believe the Lord is raising up an Elijah band of leaders in the earth today that will confront the spirit of Baal that will try to free leaders that are in bondage to the spirit of Baal. Baal means husband, Lord, owner, master, and sir. Those are the same things that we call our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Satan cannot create things, so what he tries to do is duplicate things. And he will use a counterfeit spirit to try to get us off track. He will use the same names, but it will be from the wrong source. But if we will stay in alignment, the Lord will raise up a servant. He will put his prophetic word in that servant, and that servant will come forth in humility and meekness. And he will help us to realign our hearts for the season that we're entering to. He's that kind of God. Friends, you believe that? I believe that. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles this morning, if you could turn to Galatians chapter 6. Good morning. I want to welcome everyone to Advancing God's Kingdom. Amen. I'm Pastor Mark with my wife, Pastor Jackie. We're so thankful for our leadership and worship team. Amen. Amen. We're excited for what the Lord is doing. Amen. Amen. We've been asking the question, what did freedom look like in the beginning? Amen. And we define freedom as the ability, amen, to understand, to submit to, and to enjoy God's will, God's purpose, and God's intent for our life. And so we want to look at another aspect of freedom today, amen. We want to kind of jump into this, amen. We want to look at the freedom to serve one another in love. The freedom to serve one another in love, amen. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, amen. Brothers and sisters, if someone is overtaken in a sin, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit, you who walk in the Spirit, you who believe that the Lord is faithful, you who believe that the promises of God are yes and amen, You who keep in step with the Spirit, amen, restore that person. Restore that person. Restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions, then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Amen. The freedom to serve one another, amen, it looks like three things. Say restoration. Restoration. Say reconciliation. Reconciliation. And say renewal, amen. Amen. Restoration always speaks to the attitude by which we interact with people, amen. It means that we work to bring people back into alignment, amen. We work to establish people, amen. Reconciliation. It means that we work to bring harmony and to make them compatible, amen? We work towards these things. And then renewal, amen? We work, amen, to make sure that their minds are in agreement with the right thing, amen? We work with them, amen? We don't work against them, amen? We work with them. Sometimes we work for them, amen? Sometimes because of what's happened to them, They don't even realize, amen, that we're trying to work with them, amen. But because we have let the cross and the word of God do such a purifying work in our hearts, we don't get offended by their behavior. We continue to approach them because we're full of grace. We're full of thanksgiving. We're full of humility. Only humility has the ability to, to keep approaching offense. (laughs) Now we need wisdom, amen? Say we need wisdom, amen? But that wisdom will empower us, amen? 
if someone is caught. It's interesting because this word means that they are surprised. It means that they are not even fully aware of their true spiritual condition in that point. They're unaware. They're surprised. They don't even realize that they've been overtaken. But that's okay because that's when the parts of the body surround them, not in a stalking kind of way, amen, but they come alongside, amen. They come to assist like the power of the Holy Spirit always tries to do, amen. So we work to restore them, amen. We work to work with them, amen. And we restore them to three things. We restore them to a right relationship with God. The first thing we want them to do through the attitude, through the meekness, through the humility that we demonstrate towards them is we want them to be able to confess their sin to God. We want them to experience brokenness and humility afresh. We want to work with them to help them renew their mind in this area. We want to help them to return to the heart and the spirit of a servant. Then we work with them or we want to restore them to right relationship with others. We want to help them humble themselves so that they can acknowledge that I'm wrong. They can acknowledge that I've hurt somebody, I've injured somebody, I've done something and it's created a breach. We want to work with them to help them renew the relationship and that relationship be better than it was before. We don't want to just restore that relationship. We want it to be better than it was before. And then we want to help them to learn how to live in new boundaries so that they can avoid falling in the same area repeatedly. And then if they're in ministry, if they can submit themselves to a process, if they can truly humble themselves, then eventually we want to see them restored to some type of ministry. Even if that ministry doesn't look like it previously looked, it actually could be better because now they can make more of an impact as they return to a heart of a servant. So we're restoring people. So what does this look like for the person that is trying to restore somebody else? I'm glad you asked, friends. Let's look at Matthew chapter 7 right quick, amen? What does this look like, amen? Matthew chapter 7. If we are walking in the freedom to serve somebody else in restoration, this is where we start. Amen. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Amen. Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. Amen. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to to the plank in your own eye. How can you say to your brother or sister, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, say first. First. Right, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. The first thing that we have to do if we want to be used to bring restoration to other people, we must realize that we have planks. And because we have planks, our first ministry is not to go to that person, but it's to go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord, is there a plank that could hinder me from being used by you, Lord, to restore somebody. Now, it's interesting because typically, if you're like me, I like to go to the Lord and do this, but the Lord has a way of sending me to somebody that I can touch and feel to do this. James chapter 5, right? James told us, confess your faults one to another. As a matter of fact, I had a plank that was hanging off of my face that I didn't even realize, and I don't even know how long it had been hanging on my face. I just know that I was whacking people with it. Every time I turned, whacking people, whacking people, whacking people, whacking people. And listen, friends, I didn't even know that I had a plank. But something jumped off. 
and I responded the wrong way, and I responded the wrong way because I had a plank, but I went after another person that only had a speck. And I turned their speck into a plank so that I could justify myself. That's me. I did this. I just, I just walked through this. And as the situation kind of worked out, amen, it was interesting because I'm talking to the Lord. The Lord said, that's good, but I want you to call a couple pastors, and I want you to explain to them what happened, and I want you to submit to their counsel mm -hmm. so that you can be accountable for the next four to six weeks. Jesus. And tell them that I said to tell them to ask you the hard questions because I want to do something in you. Jesus. So I called, and I told them, and, and I told them to ask me the hard questions. And listen, I'm just realizing four or five weeks after this process that I had a plank. Now, here's what's crazy. I don't even know who I've been planking. <laughs> <laughs> Which means, potentially, I've been getting all kind of people. My wife, my kids, amen. The body of Christ, my co-workers, amen. And if you're anything like me, we can get real comfortable with a plank. And the longer we don't see it, the more we see specks in other people's <laughs> eyes, but we're convinced that it's Jesus. a speck and it's the other end of our plank. Lord, have mercy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Woo. So I've been trying to restore people with a plank. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. <laughs> so the first thing Jesus said is, son, Yes, what happened was true, but before we talk about what happened, can we talk about what's been happening? <laughs> can I talk about this two by four that's just been hanging off your face? <laughs> and so I had a plank. And God used this situation. Now, when it started, I was like, that person, that person, that person, that person. And now I'm like, the plank, <laughs> the plank. <laughs> <laughs> like tattoo on Fancy Island, the plague, <laughs> the plague, <laughs> hey boss, the plague, <laughs> the plague. <laughs> and so Jesus said, yes, I can use you, but I've got to allow you to have some planks so that we can have real humility. Because without the planks, I have no reason to be humble. Because I can see. Jesus. <laughs> so here's where we start, right? James 5, right? 18, confess your faults, not to Jesus, one to another, so that you can be healed. Yes, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to cleanse us and to forgive us from all unrighteousness. But he wants us to bring all of this individualized secret confession out of our prayer room. And he wants to bring it into relationships because it keeps us humble. It keeps our hearts soft and pliable. So this is where I start. If I believe that God's calling me to use me to serve my brothers and sisters in love by restoration, I must first be open to the fact, and I might have multiple planks, and that's okay. That's okay. That, that, that's okay. Our professor, Dr. Royce Evans, reminded us last week, amen, that we are the broken that have been given the privilege by God to be yeah. used to serve other broken people. The broken, serving the broken. So this is where we start, right? Brothers and sisters, if anyone be overtaken, if anyone be overware, if anyone be surprised, you who are spiritual, spiritual sons and daughters grow in maturity, not by prayer and Bible study alone, but by having real planks that they have to bring to other people in the body, not just to Jesus. Wow, see? Because Jesus has a body. He doesn't just have a head. Yeah. And this creates 
genuine humility. This tempers our approach. Because if I've just got my plank removed, and my plank is bigger than your speck, my attitude will be one to serve you, not to slave you. It will be one to build you, not to blast you. And when you get offended that I'm even talking to you about this because you're surprised, you're, uh, you're not aware, so offense raises up, what do you mean? <laughs> Why are you talking to me about this? Because I had to have the plank removed from me, that gives me the temperance and the meekness and the patience to keep dealing with you. See, it really prepares me to be a vessel and a vehicle to really watch what the Lord will do. So the plank is a good thing. Say the plank is a good thing. So we start with our plank, not with their speck. Now, I got to be honest, okay? <laughs> I typically have not started here. <laughs> or if I have, I haven't been able to maintain this perspective for prolonged seasons. So I have seasons where I start here and I do well, and then I have seasons where I just forget I got a plank. And I'm just out here whacking people. Whack, 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 whack. Whack, 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 whack. Waka, waka, waka. So this is where we start. So can we all admit that we got some planks? Amen. Now, this is such a refreshing place to start because I don't start with you, I start with me. And again, it breaks down these walls that abandonment, rejection, and isolation have built because sometimes as believers, we can still have these walls up. That's why we want to tell all of our sin to Jesus and none to somebody else. Because when we're man pleasers, we care about what you think about us. But if we get the revelation that we all have planks, listen, some of our planks are red, some of our planks are blue, some of our planks are brown, some of our planks are green, some of our planks are orange. And a lot of times the enemy gets us fighting over the plank so that we don't get rid of the plank. And so we're just planking everybody. Plank, plank, plank. Does that make sense? Brothers and sisters, if someone is overtaken, if someone is surprised, if someone is unaware that they are walking in the flesh, that they are walking in sin, that they're not walking in the light, that they're not walking in the truth, that they're not walking in love, amen, you who live by the Spirit, you who live by the Spirit, should be. God said, listen, I'm going to use people to restore people. I'm not going to always come down and do it. I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it through people that realize they have planks. That's what I'm going to do. But watch yourselves, or else you may be tempted. How do I avoid being tempted? I just have to have the Holy Spirit remind me. Now, you know you had a plank yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know last week, <laughs> we, we just, listen, it took a saw and everything to get that plank out. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> So I know you are not coming for people like that, and you just got, but listen, the flesh is real. And if you're anything like me, you can barely get the plank out, haven't blinked twice, and now you want to talk about, Lord, I'm ready to restore somebody. Restore somebody. Listen, just look for a minute without the plank. Say maturity. Listen to some of the phrases he says here in Galatians 5, amen? Listen to what he says in verse 13. Serve one another in love, amen? Listen to what he says in verse 16. Walk by the Spirit. Verse 18, led by the Spirit, amen? Verse 23, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Yes. Notice the theme there is the Holy Spirit, not us. That's good. It's us agreeing with the Spirit, yes. Not us trying to be the spirit. Yeah. Second thing I struggle with, 
I am very comfortable being the spirit in my life and everybody else's <laughs> life around me. <laughs> okay, I know you're not like me. I'm very comfortable being the spirit. I am not very comfortable being the servant because the servant has to wait. The servant has to pray. The servant has to walk in humility. The servant has to wait on the Lord. The spirit. A lot of times the spirit is waiting on me, and I think I'm waiting on the spirit. <laughs> Does this make sense? But watch yourself or else you may be tempted. Tempted to do what? Well, how in the world did this joker get in this situation? The same way you got your situation? I cannot believe sister such and such is at it again. Lord, you would think that by this time, and the whole time Jesus is looking like, wow, really? <laughs> really, Lord? You know what we're going to have to do, Father? What's that? We're going to have to show him another plank. So the planks are good things because the planks are where we start, not where we stop. And for every plank that I let the Lord deal with, that makes me a candidate to be used by the spirit to go after a speck in another son or daughter's life. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. We'll stop here. The word there for burdens here is a huge boulder. This, it's a boulder. It is something that one person cannot physically carry. As No matter how strong they are, they can't do it. So this thing that has overtaken this person has become a boulder-sized burden that they need help with. And either they don't believe they need help, they don't want help, or they're not trying to get help because they've been overtaken. It takes spiritual strength to lift the boulder. Sometimes we're dealing with stuff and we're not strong enough by ourselves and we just keep trying, 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 and then finally we give up. We haven't told another brother or sister, can you help me with this? Because of shame. Because if I tell my brother or my sister I'm dealing with this, how are they going to deal with me? I got a pastor in my life, amen? <laughs> and this is one of the things he ministers to me, amen? And there are times when I convince myself that I really want the best for people. And I kind of do. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of I, I, I kind of do, but it's got to be like a convenience thing. Like, I, I'm available to help you with your burdens between the hours of 2 and 3 <laughs> on these dates. <laughs> but that's not how life flows in the kingdom. Carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. What's the law of Christ? Serving one another in love. Listen to this, friends. Philippians 5 and 1. It's for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and be not entangled again by the yoke of bondage. It's for freedom. The only thing that counts is faith that expresses itself through love. Mm -hmm. So if I'm free to serve people, and if people have burdens and they can't carry them by themselves, then I just need to ask myself this question, and here's where we'll stop. How many burdens have I helped people carry lately? Or how many burdens have I stood back and watched them try to carry? Because as long as I have a plank, I won't lift my hand to help, but I will release my tongue to judge. Jesus. Carry each up. Now, now here's the real thing about this. I should probably help them carry it in this season because in the next season, I'm going to have a burden too. So I should look out for my next season in them because if I sow to the spirit, I will reap life. Sometimes life looks like a helping hand, not a blistering tongue. 
Now, this is the spiritually mature. This church had come under the attack of false teaching, and they were biting and devouring each other. And the fruit of the teaching speaks more about if you're under the truth, not the gift of the teacher. The fruit of the teaching speaks more about if we're really under the truth, not the gift of the teacher. Because the gifting can flow from the soul, not from the spirit. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The fruit of the teaching, carrying each other's burdens, speaks more about if we're really under the truth, not the gift of the teacher. And if we're not careful, we'll get trapped like me and we'll get seduced into following the gift, but never lifting a hand to help the burden. We're talking about freedom to serve our brothers and sisters in love. We got more to share, but I think this is enough for us to chew on. (laughs) We're going to get into Matthew 18 where we have a clear principle and protocol for the four steps we're to take in how we restore. Mm -hmm. But I got to be honest, I can't get to the principles and the protocol until I get some restoration. (laughs) If I can get rid of this plank, then I can see the principles that God wants to use to bring restoration to others. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Father, thank you for your grace today. Thank you for teaching us how to walk in the spirit, how to walk in the light, how to walk in love, and how to walk in truth. We can't do it by ourselves, but we can do all things through you. We look to you. Thank you for this freedom not to indulge in the sinful nature, but rather to serve our brothers and sisters in love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.